Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Dulwich in South London to Deptford in South East London. This ride takes about half an hour, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport, the same journey takes around an hour and requires a change of bus or train so you can save a huge amount of time by cycling this journey. If you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well, then you can find a link in the description below the video. All right, let's get going. So we're starting on College Road opposite the Dulwich Picture Gallery and we're going to head into Dulwich Park. The first stretch of the route in the park is on a little road which does have some parking so watch out for cars pulling out of the spaces on the edge of the street. Once we get out of this section though and past this gate the road very quickly turns into a traffic free path. These paths are shared with pedestrians, so make sure you give everybody plenty of space and ride with courtesy. They are, however, nice and wide, so you shouldn't run into any problems. One thing to be aware of is that the park's gates are locked at night, so if you're coming here after dark, you'll need to take an alternative route for this first section. Fortunately, that's not too difficult. You can just continue down College Road and turn right into Court Lane, which is very low traffic as it's closed to cars at one end. Once you go down Court Lane, you should be able to join the route at the gate where we exit the park, just up ahead here. Personally, I prefer riding through the park where possible, as it is just a really nice spot. We're gonna head straight out of the park gate onto Anella Road, but just make sure that you're careful as you cross Court Lane and check in both directions for traffic. Anella Road itself is really quiet as it benefits from the same point closure as Court Lane does, meaning that there isn't any through traffic on here. On our right coming up, the relatively ornate Victorian building is Dulwich Library, if you fancy stopping to pick up a book. This next junction is important to pay attention at, as the right turn can be a little bit tricky. We want to turn right into Etherow Street, but note that there is a bit of a blind corner here, so do check that there's no traffic and then you can turn into here. By the way, that space on the left there, protected by plastic wands, is actually an extension of the pavement. Don't mistake it for a cycle lane. Hopefully, Southwark Council will be along in a few months' time and replace that with a permanent pavement build-out with proper curbs and such. It's nice to see improved space outside the front of a primary school there, although it does make Etherow Street a little bit tight when it comes to squeezing past cars so just keep that in mind as you cycle down there. We're now on Freehan Road, which is a really useful cycle link in this part of town. It's quite long and straight, but it's also closed at one end with some bollards, so there isn't any through motor traffic on here, and you can usually rely on it being relatively quiet. While it is a comfortable ride, one thing that you should be aware of is the side roads like the one coming up here. These are not closed to through traffic and you'll often see cars rat running down them at relatively fast speeds and sometimes ignoring the give way lines. So just be cautious as you approach those junctions and make sure you're paying attention. Southwark should probably think about fixing that issue by turning the whole area into a low traffic neighborhood rather than just having this single closure which we're passing through now. This end of the street is also badly in need of a resurface. It looks like it's been dug up quite a lot and it has some pretty big potholes. Bear left here onto the shared pavement and you get a signalised crossing which helps you cross Peckham Rye West Side right onto Peckham Rye Common. Just like with Dulwich Park, these paths are shared with pedestrians and they're also quite a bit narrower than the ones in the previous park we were in, so just make sure that you're careful, ride courteously and don't give anyone a scare by going too quick past them. Peckham Rye Common is better than Dulwich Park in one respect, and that's that it's not closed at night, so you can ride here at all hours, including if you are commuting from work in the winter where it might be dark by the time you leave your workplace. 
There are also street lights, as you can see, so it shouldn't be too daunting to ride through here, and it does remain relatively well lit at all hours. Peckham Rye has always been common land, but it was preserved as such in 1868 after, believe it or not, a travelling wild beast show arrived here and set up camp. Local people were apparently concerned that the land might become privately owned or misused, so the local government purchased it for £1,000. It was eventually transferred to the Metropolitan Board of Works, which was the London-wide local government at the time. The Metropolitan Board also built Dulwich Park, which we passed through earlier. After crossing out of Peckham Rye onto Somerton Road, we find ourselves in a kind of maze of streets with very little traffic on them, thanks to an elaborate one-way system and various point closures like the one you can see on the right there. If you need help remembering which way to go at any point in this video, you can always download the map of the route. There's a link to it in the description below the video on YouTube, and it comes in a GPX format file, which you can use on whatever app or device that you prefer. It's very much a standard format. The next couple of minutes are probably the weakest part of this route, I think. When I cycled down Linden Grove for this video, as you can see it was relatively quiet. I think it is like this a lot of the time, but it does get a bit busier and there are some features of this road that give you a clue to that. If you look at the street here, you'll see a chicane. These are installed to try and slow traffic and there's also a speed camera here in yellow on our right in the middle of the road. There's also other things like raised tables, speed bumps, and another chicane just coming up. These are all clues that people who live on this street are fed up with traffic problems and have written to the council to ask them to do something about them. Unfortunately, they're also not particularly effective measures. So my hunch is that if you came down here at peak time, you'd probably face quite a bit more traffic. I don't want to put anybody off from cycling down there. I do think it is the best way through this area, but equally, I don't want to lie to you and pretend that it's always going to be that quiet. I do think whenever you see measures like that with chicanes or speed bumps on a side road that's supposed to be a residential street, you should be thinking, ah, this area probably needs a low traffic neighbourhood, as point closures, filters, those tend to be the interventions that actually work in terms of getting rid of through traffic and cutting through traffic in residential areas. So I really hope Southwark does take a little bit of a look at that. For this area around Nunhead Station, it would make a lot of sense. Now, if this isn't an area that you know well yourself, I should point out that it is pretty hilly around here. There are some kind of unwelcome gradients. Unless you're the kind of person who welcomes hills, I do know that you guys do exist. Probably the biggest hill on this route is the street that we're about to turn onto now, and that is Waller Road. Fortunately, in this direction, we're actually going to be cycling down the hill, but as you can see, it does drop away relatively quickly down there. Now, Waller Road actually has a modal filter on it. It's closed in the middle, so it's actually a really comfortable ride, and there isn't any through traffic on it. It's nice and wide as well, so you do have plenty of space. Those low traffic levels also mean that the hill in the opposite direction when you're going up it isn't actually so much of a big deal, I think. This is a point I've made before and I'll make it again. I think that the problem with hills when you're on a bike is actually the fear of having a car up behind you rather than the hill itself necessarily being difficult. When you can rely on being in a low traffic situation like you're in an LTN or on a filtered street or you've got your own protected lane, those hills are a lot less taxing, and certainly in my view, I just don't mind them as much. By the way, I slow right down here so you can get a look at the building on the left. What do you think that is? It's uh, quite an interesting Victorian piece of public architecture. It's actually a fire station, which I find pretty incredible. That's probably not the first thing that jumped into your mind. If you look here on the left, you can actually see the big engine bays facing onto Queen's Road. Now, we used the Toucan Crossing to pass into the Lanchester Way estate, and you have to be very careful here. Do not cycle down these steps. Um, if it's dark, you may miss that there are steps there. You have to go around and use the ramp. 
Annoyingly, there's a chicane on the ramp, which makes things really unpleasant. And given that chicane is there to help people who can't use the stairs, uh, particularly people who might, say, have buggies, be cycling, or in a wheelchair, it does seem pretty bad to have a chicane there, given it actually makes the access a lot harder. The route has become a lot more comfortable and low traffic again on streets without through traffic. Although that section through Linden Grove and past Nunhead Station has a little bit more traffic on it than you would like, I do think it is still worth going that way, and that's partly because of the huge time saving that this route gives over the other options. If you remember from the beginning of the video, it's really difficult to get from Dulwich to Deptford by public transport. It takes around an hour and requires a change. This route is pretty comfortable. I think most people could cycle it pretty easily, even if you're a beginner, and yet it only takes half an hour. As I alluded to earlier, I think that that section around Linden Grove and Nunhead Station would really benefit from a low traffic neighbourhood. It would really plug a gap in the cycle network around here and give people more options. Given the public transport along that axis is clearly not as good as it could be. Hopefully Southwark and Lewisham councils will take a look at that. By the way, one thing Lewisham might be doing soon which could improve this route is putting a filter on Cold Blow Lane and hopefully adding two-way cycling on there. If that happens, we wouldn't need to go this way via Avonlea Road. You could just continue straight down Monson Road, which we were on earlier, and it would cut about a minute off the journey. Until that does happen, we need to go through this path onto John Williams Close, which has this really unfortunate chicane on it. And that will lead us on to Bridge House Meadows, which is a path which will connect us to Cycleway 10, an official TFL route, which is going to take us directly into the heart of Deptford. Now, this street may be called John Williams Close, but it's not named after the famous composer of the Star Wars theme tune, John Williams. It's actually named after John Williams who was an environmental health officer at Lewisham Council, who was actually killed by a drunk driver while on patrol. That's a really sad story and also seems like a nice memorial. Now, we're currently cycling through Bridge House Meadows, and I'll be honest, this is an incredibly fun path to cycle down. It has a really pleasant undulation to it, and it's reasonably wide. So even though it's shared with pedestrians, it's a relatively comfortable one. We want to cross the road here to get to the shared path on the other side of Surrey Canal Road and the way we do that is by going into Senegal Way here and turning right up the path. You're not actually allowed to cycle on the crossing itself there as it's not a toucan crossing. However, that will change soon as Southwark Council has plans to install a proper cycle crossing over Surrey Canal Road as part of the Peckham to Rotherhithe Cycleway program, which will hopefully be going in over the next year or so. That will be really welcome, as currently the crossing arrangement is not great, to be honest. As shared paths go, this one is pretty good. It tends to have pretty little in the way of people walking. It's nice and wide. It has a relatively good surface, and it's nicely separated from the roadway by this nice bit of planting and a grass verge. One thing you do need to watch out for though is the entrances and exits to the businesses along the road like this one here. There could be vans, lorries, cars etc pulling out of any of those at any one time so just make sure that you are careful. We then find ourselves in Folkestone Gardens which is a park which is open 24 hours. There's no gate to lock or anything like that and it does also have street lighting so it shouldn't be pitch black if you're cycling through here on your way home from work or anything like that. We come here a lot on this channel and I'd just like to point out the nice new playground that seems to be emerging on the right hand side there. It may even be open by the time this video goes out at the end of January because it looks pretty complete. I might even bring my son there if I take him on the back of my bike. Now don't miss this right turn down Childers Street this road is a relatively quiet one and I never really see much in the way of through traffic on here. Although for some reason when I came down here this time there was a very frustrated Royal Mail van overtaking that red car and absolutely powering it down the road. So hopefully you won't see anything like that when you come down here. 
For the rest of the route, we are following the official route of Cycleway 10, which used to be known as Quietway 1. So you can do that by looking where it says C10 written on the ground. And there's also these green and blue signs on lamp posts pointing you in the correct direction. It's pretty good wayfinding and I don't think you should get lost, especially if you've seen this video. Coming up ahead, there is a ghost pub. You can see on the left there, it's called the Lord Clyde. Used to be a pub and is obviously identifiable as such, but I think it's flats now. Obviously, it's great that the people who live there have somewhere to live, but it's always a bit sad to see a pub close, I think. Now, we're on Edward Street, which is a protected cycle lane, and this street here actually has the honour of being the most recently constructed curb protected cycle lane that Lewisham Council has built. And it's not a very recently uh, constructed cycle lane. It actually went in in 2016. So it's been eight years almost since Lewisham built any proper curb protected cycle lanes. They have put in some wand protected lanes, a very limited section just south of Lewisham Town Centre. And there was also a TFL scheme on cycleway 4 but if you count those there are more recent ones but that's the most recent curb protected lane the council has built um, and it takes us quite nicely to the middle of Deptford High Street so we've done it Dulwich to Deptford in just half an hour when it takes around an hour and requires a change to get here by public transport do let me know in the comments what you think of that route um, you can see there's a bit of a kink at the end. It gets slightly indirect and you kind of dog leg back on yourself from the map. Um, if the cold blow lane cycle route goes in, if Lewisham does that, that should cut off most of that kink and save you a minute or two, which will be, I think, quite nice. It's already a pretty decent route, but as I said, I'd love to see some low traffic neighbourhoods around Nunhead Station and around Linden Grove. I think those areas could really do with some improvement and they're clearly popular cycle routes as well. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and thanks very much again to those of you who contribute on the Patreon. If anyone else is feeling generous and would like to chuck the channel a couple of quid a month then you can find a link in the description below the video. I'll see you guys all again next time.